Michael Miles, the former UK ambassador to Libya. Uh, hi, Mr. Miles. Thank you for your time. So, uh, Prime Minister May said uh, diplomacy knows. didn't work. She had to act. But the question still is, why did she have to act so quickly, do you think? Why didn't she go to Parliament and get approval? Well, uh, I don't know the answer to that question, and I don't think her, her answers to it have been very convincing. Uh, my own opinion is that before launching a, a, an operation of this kind, you have to pass three tests. The first is, is it legal? The second is, is it effective? And the third is, what are the political consequences? Now, in this particular case, because the operation seems to have been carried out very cleanly and there are no reports of serious collateral damage or many casualties, I think the political consequences are acceptable. Uh, whether it was effective or not depends on what, what you think was the objective, and uh, we could come back to that if you like. But I think it fails on the first test because I don't think it's legal. Uh, I think that uh, uh, what the, the um, Prime Minister and the government and the, and the other governments concerned have failed to address is that the Charter of the United Nations is very clear that military action of this kind can only be undertaken in two circumstances, either in self-defence, which clearly this was not, or with the authority of the Security Council, which they did not have. Maybe she thought it was strength in numbers, that it looked like uh, France was going to go ahead with it in the same kind of way, and, and America as well. Who knows? Um, uh, the, how would you assess the UK government's claims that there was indeed a humanitarian basis for this intervention? Well, of course, the humanitarian situation in, in, in Syria is horrible, and, and uh, anything that can be done to uh, ease the sufferings of the Syrian people should be done. But the chemical warfare element in this is relatively small. The, the enormous numbers of casualties have been caused by the war. Mm. Uh, very, very few of those have been even alleged to be involved in, in uh, chemical warfare. So I think if we're going to talk about the humanitarian problem, we have to take a broader view. Mm. Uh, again, she wasn't able to provide, I don't know how you would provide this, any concrete evidence of why she did what she did at the weekend to Parliament. Crucially, you'd hope she could uh, bring some rabbit out the hat on that one by now, wouldn't you? Well, I don't think... Uh, no, I, I, there I'm sympathetic to the, to the Prime Minister's position. That you, of course, we don't have absolute proof such as would be demanded in a court of law that, that uh, the Syrian regime were responsible for this for a chemical attack in this particular case. Uh, but you very rarely do have absolute proof in international affairs. Mm. You have to operate on something less than absolute proof. Mm. And so I, I don't criticise the government on that score. Do you think this is a, the slippery end of the wedge, if you like? We're going to see more of this kind of thing in future? Well, that's the worry, of course, because um, the, the, the government and the other governments concerned have, have stressed uh, very rightly the importance of strengthening the, the taboo on, on use of chem chemical weapons. They're determined that chemical weapons shouldn't become accepted as part of, of legitimate warfare. And we must all sympathise with that. I'm sure everybody mm. would agree that that's a legitimate objective. But the trouble is that in pursuing that objective, they've weakened the the inhibition, the, the, the ban on aggressive war, because what is laid down in the United Nations Charter is quite straightforward, as I've already explained, mm. and it hasn't been taken into account. Mr. Miles, thank you for your time. Oliver Miles, former UK ambassador to Libya, live on RT International. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next on your screens, you're seeing here.